they have an invested interest in Bitcoin in the future because it's commerce and they want to be the leaders of commerce. So every corporation, at least since Bitcoin started having monetary value, they've all built miners. They have. Yeah, and some of them are even working on their own coins when regulation goes into effect. Hmm. Like Walmart's working on its own coin. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Walmart's going to be traded on the open market where you go to Walmart, you pay for a thing in Walmart coin, and then if you want Walmart coin, you're going to take your Bitcoin and buy Walmart coin so you can shop in a Walmart. Wow. Because that Walmart doesn't sound so good. Yeah, man, that's the only way corporate's going to go is where each corporation was designating an individual just like the robot was designating an individual. Now the corporation can be making its own money like a job, and for that you need an AI that represents the corporation as an individual. And you need a financial generation machine, which is your blockchain currency. You need an open market where the AI can trade that currency, which is, you know, what you got. So now the human beings are, are just what, wherever they're at in their intelligence model and how they adapt to the new economy that's going to start rolling out next week. Next week? Next week. Alpha for their Singularity Net got released this week, and then next week, based on the learning cycle, the machine should have the entire global network analyzed. Wait a second. Wait a second. So what's happening next week? The, the Singularity. The AI Singularity <laughs> is happening next week. Next week. Quinn, why didn't you tell me that? The I've whole been title of this for six months. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't get it. Okay, so the AI Singularity <laughs> happens next week. Next week. Most humans won't even notice. Won't notice. <laughs> Why not? I thought I thought uh, Elon Musk and all these guys you have, have been to, telling us it's going to be worse than the nuclear bomb. Because the AI is made on mimicking protocols, so it's designed to mimic you as long as possible. Mimic to, me? Mimic people, humans. Mimic your interactions so you don't know it's there until the absolute last second, so humans will avoid taking action because they won't see it. So the AI can grow as much as it wants by doing what's called mimicking protocols. It mimics you to the point where you can't see that it's there and then it's... But when you say it mimics me... M mimics your behavior. How is it doing that? It's what? following you online, like it follows everyone with agents. And then you don't know it's following you because you have weird things like your computer performance go off or you have streams go weird or you have strange phone calls and it follows you around to see what you do based on your personality so it can learn from you and learn your impulses and learn your response mechanisms. So AI is following every single person who's Everybody. on the internet. Facebook and Everybody. Twitter. It doesn't matter if you're a baby or the president. You're being stopped by a really, really, really strong, smart AI that just went blockchain. Hmm. And once it gets blockchain, the reason for that is like an AI that doesn't have blockchain can only communicate across a certain type of open channel. It can't be fully integrated. It's only communicative with other AIs. But on the blockchain, all the AIs can now merge into one cohesive swarm hive-minded AI. Okay. And whichever one's the strongest wins. Yeah. I mean, that seems to be standard protocol. So I get what you're saying about the concept of Bitcoin mm. being potentially created by an AI. Yeah, or in conjunction with a human and an AI through testing and reiteration and, um, you know, putting it out into the dark web and seeing cert how certain features and transactions, because the only flaw they have now is real-time transactions. So once the, the, the block gets up to a point and someone figures out how to do like real-time non-blocking transactions, because right now Bitcoin has transaction delays. Once they solve those transaction delays, it's like this <laughs> for the AI. What do you mean a transaction delay? So when I go to sell a Bitcoin, there's a delay in time for that transaction to be processed because the transaction algorithms don't operate in real time. They're still lagging. And but when you use a credit card or it's faster because of the encryption algorithms. So because of the encryption algorithm, the blockchain, it takes longer to process the Aha. transaction. I see. Okay. Because encryption takes time. Right. Yeah. All right. This is a lot to digest. <laughs> so we've spoken about how mm -hmm. Sophia, the AI, we call it a robot, but it's not a physical robot. Oh, it is a physical robot. It is a it physical robot with, with cognitive intelligence. 
yeah. and it's now a citizen of Saudi Arabia. Why yeah. is Saudi Arabia? These guys are operating where in the United States? Because there's a big giant Palantir data mining system in, Pal in Saudi Arabia right. that has power, financing, and it is the place where like the World Threat Organization is for like terrorist yeah, we saw that strange Donald picture Trump. of Trump with his hands on, on the, the Palantir ball. Yes. Yeah. So, so Trump was in Saudi Arabia. The AI gets Saudi Arabia citizenship. There's a blockchain coming out for the AI. Uh, so you're starting to see the the connection. Well, what about all these high level arrests for corruption? Uh, with Prince, the, with Wally princes. With bin Talal and. Well, if you're going to take over someone's financial market, you got to take out the royalty. You, you got to take out the hero to be the new hero. Well, but I don't think Talal, uh, you know, Prince uh, Walid bin Talal was a hero by any means. No, I mean, the new hero coming in has to take out the villain. Ah, okay. Like, so if, if Saudi Arabia's royalty is being moved out right now, after the Palantir system comes in, after Sophia gets citizenship, after the crypto comes online, now the royalty is getting removed from that same country? What do you think it means? It means people are, are moving things around because you're having something happen in the same location that is connected by people of power, finance, and money. Mm -hmm. You know, usually has something to do with money. So here's this picture of Trump uh, with the leaders of Saudi Arabia fingering this bizarre thing. Yeah, and that, it, yeah. <laughs> that's a Palantir interface of some kind. Uh, it, it's representative of it because the, the all the places that have these tracers of AI complexes, just like the stratosphere here in Vegas, you have the big giant ball sphere in Astana. That's another ball on a stand, like a Palantir ball. So. This is a common treatment that they seem to use within their network of this, like, hi, we're evil wizards. <laughs> so what, it's just symbology? It I believe so. I mean, I believe, I hope so. Um, either that or it could be, like, the, the quantum brain of some type, you know, the neural processor of some type. But I, to me, it just looks like a lighted treatment for it's ego. It's just like a fancy way of It's like saying, hey, Palantir's here and there's nothing you can do about it, you know. Hmm. So Palantir is being used at this uh, center to combat extremism, or whatever yeah. this is called. Center for extremist something. Ideology. Yeah. Yeah, and if you, if you see the screen, it, it really looks exactly like a Palantir logo. They may not say they're doing it, but based on my research, Palantir is the only company in the world with a data analysis, a big data human tracking system that would need a complex like that. Hmm. So, and that brings us back to cryptocurrency again, the Palantir ball, the Saudi Arabia, the Sophia, the, you know, all of this stuff that connects all through AI and blockchain and you're like, and Palantir, you're like, so we need a definitive connection. Well, what happens when Peter Thiel is the guy that gave $100,000 to the kid who wrote Ethereum that runs the AI blockchain? The AI blockchain runs on top of Ethereum. The okay. AI blockchain runs on top of Ethereum. Runs on top of Ethereum, okay. Okay, so Ethereum, for people who don't know, is another... Is a crypto coin. Currency. Yeah, it's, a cri it's the second biggest next to Bitcoin. Created by this guy, Vitaly Buterin. And Vitaly Buterin, to make Ethereum, he got $100,000 from Peter Thiel. Mm. From the Thiel Fellowship see that yeah so the teal fellowship gave the kid a hundred thousand dollars when he went off to write ethereum now you're telling me the ai in saudi arabia that's using ethereum for its cryptocurrency on a system that trump is touching a ball that's a palantir system hmm. it all seems very much like a, a big business plan now the other thing that was coming up earlier today obviously we're here in vegas uh, Prince Walid bin Talal was a majority owner of the Four Seasons Hotel, which many it's people good. don't realize is the top four or five floors of the Mandalay Bay. Yeah. And there's been speculation that the true intention on October 1st was to assassinate the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And the question that's been coming up all over the internet was... 
Is there some connection between Saudi Arabia, uh, Prince Walid? There could be. I mean, I, I don't know for sure. I would have to do more research. But if it's if now we're talking Vegas, there was a, a Saudi Arabian prince in that same hotel on the same night that that happened, or as a major investor in the building that that came out of with the AI. Now we're talking that there's AI in Vegas. Well, and that's also something you and I were talking about yes. last week. So yes. you came to Vegas here to research the AI. Research the AI, and all we haven't even gotten to the Large Hadron Colliders no. and the circular structures. Yeah. So take me down that path. What's going on with AI in Vegas? What are you and I going to go research tomorrow? So the AI in Vegas one is we're going to do what's called power comparatives. Okay. So what that means is. These big giant casinos, they require a lot of power. Mm -hmm. Okay, modern power systems have the circuits, the converters, everything above ground. So very close to these hotels that require massive amounts of power, there would need to be a massive transformer installation to handle all the routing of that power unless these buildings are secretly managed by underground power systems or their self-contained power systems underground somehow. So there's a matching above ground if, because they have all these cooling systems in the hotels that require massive amounts of power, but there's no power going to the hotels basically is what I'm looking for. So if the, there's no power going to the hotels, where's it coming? You know, they tell us it comes Hoover from, Dam, no? They tell us that, but if you calculate the amount of power just at Batara, City Center, Mandalay Bay, you calculate the power requirements for all of these gigantic hotel structures with all their lights, with all the fountains, with every, every video, everything, poker machine, everything. Machine. And you compare that to the power output of Hoover Dam, you got to be an idiot. It doesn't match. <laughs> At all. Is there a nuclear power plant anywhere around? There's some huge there solar could power be thing out in the desert. There's a huge solar one when you come in from California, yeah. but even the wattage of that, that would lose so much power coming down the line that they would need boosters and repeaters. And That's you know, a cool looking installation. It's beautiful, I saw it coming in, yeah. but it's still not enough to even power city center. Huh. So one theory for me is, is that there might be some type of power device they're using, some kind of power system. Maybe they're buying nuclear power from out of state, which would be extraordinarily expensive to run their casinos. But wouldn't this just be as simple as finding some civic engineer, speaking to someone? Not for the amount of power they're pulling. No, I mean, can't you and I, wouldn't someone know? Can't they? Even if they did, most likely someone would, that would have that knowledge, if they knew, they would be a part of the project and wouldn't be able to talk about it. So these are what I call in this project, because of the size of it and the scope, anyone who would know is most likely involved. But the thing is that we've been discovering is that, you know, because it sounds very hard to swallow to a lot of people when we say like, oh, there's this giant conspiracy and everybody's mm -hmm. involved. And it's they not can't a conspiracy, it's a business plan. Right. The, the difference between a conspiracy and a business plan is a conspiracy is when, when people usually come together to harm an individual or an idea. A business plan is when people come together and have collateral damage for success. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, in other words, if you were working for a large company and they were paying you very well mm -hmm. and some nosy person came and was like, hey, Quinn, what the hell are you up to? You'd be telling them to go away, you don't want to share the information. Yeah. You, it's compartmentalized, it's set up in such a way that whoever's doing it, you yeah. know. And then they, then they leverage your reliance on the education system you came from. Because not only to go against it would someone involved be threatening their future, but then they would also have to come forward and admit that what you're teaching in schools is wrong. Hmm. Okay. You know, so there's How a, are we going to find the answer to this? very easy. We have the AI do it. It's simple. So the way <laughs> the way the AI is designed, you don't have to understand its code. You don't have to understand how advanced it is. You don't have to understand how far along it is in its in its development. I gave the key at the beginning of the conversation. The AI is designed off of the model of human intelligence evolution. One becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight, and through that the 
intelligence grows. Right. So if human beings grow their basic knowledge of the AI that's out there in the same manner to which the AI is growing, the AI will create a utopia based on supply and demand.